And according to YouTube, we are live. Please let me know if you can hear me. Can you guys hear me? So if you'll just type in the chat and let me know who's here, we will get started. Welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe our channel so that you can get all of our updates and events. So we have Lynn from Lexington, Kentucky. And we have Kathleen from Florida. Hi, Kathleen. Who is out there in Quilty Land? So we have Angel from Houston, Texas. Hi, Angel. Carol has her jellies all ready to roll. All right, Carol. Me too. So just so you know, um, tonight you're going to need three jelly rolls or 120 strips. You can use your stash. You can use whatever you want. This is one of my stacks because I'm actually making this quilt twice. And I'm also going to use this beautiful roll and it's called Fantangle. Um, I think it's beautiful. So if you have your jellies all stacked up and ready to go, we're going to get started. So welcome to This Is A Live. And the reason I do lives is because it archives the file and it allows me to teach uh, people live and then it saves the file and you can come back and watch it as many times as you like. And so welcome. Tonight we are working on our hexagon quilt. And if you've been to the website, you should have a paper that looks like this. Mine is double-sided because I like to save paper. So let's get started with the pattern. I'm going to walk you through all of the steps. And if you do not have a 60-degree ruler, I will show you how to draw your own template. Okay, so we're going to need, for this project, three jelly rolls, a 60-degree ruler, and your pattern sheet from the website. So if you have all of that, then you are ready to go. If not, just take a few moments and go ahead and grab that. Okay, so first let me show you what I have in front of me. So first I'm going to uh, turn this downward so you can see. And down here I'm going to show you how to sort your jelly roll strips for this project because that's the first thing that you need to do. According to the pattern, if you look at it carefully, it says that you are going to need a total of uh, three jelly rolls with 40 strips, which is 120. If you have yardage, you can cut three strips from 40 quarter yard cuts, or you can just make it totally scrappy. But this is what we're going to be doing. And so our quilt should finish 67 by 72. And we're going to be using as many of our scraps as possible. The construction for this uh, project is pretty straightforward. We're going to sort our strips into groups and then we are going to uh, put them into strip sets so that we can cut our hexagon blocks because in this project you will have zero YCs. So that's what we're doing tonight. So let's get started. So first take all of your beautiful jelly roll strips. I really hate opening a package but it's almost like Christmas. So if you'll take and you'll open up all of your jelly rolls, you might need a lint roller. Some jelly rolls are super linty. So if you will grab your lint roller so you can grab all those little linty things, that would be great. And then you're gonna take your jelly rolls and you're gonna sort them into groups. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do. This jelly roll has repeats, some of them do not. And so this makes it easier for me. And so the first thing that I want to do is I want to make one set that will make two blocks. So I'm going to set these aside and I'm going to grab enough for one set. So I'm going to pull this out and unroll the cardboard. And for each set of two blocks, and you're going to make a total of 49 blocks or full hexes for this quilt. I will need one strip set and a half. So I will grab, for example, I will grab a red. And this is another red because I'm going to need one full strip and one half strip for each set of blocks that I'm making. So I'll grab these two. And these will be my dark. 
that I'm going to put at the bottom of my first strip set. The second color that I'm going to grab is probably something with a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to grab this gray right here. And so I'm going to grab these two grays and I'm going to put them with this red. And I like how that looks. And now I'm probably going to grab, because I like using my handy dandy color wheel, I'm going to grab this bright aqua. I could grab this one because it has a little bit of contrast, so I'm probably going to grab this one. And so now I have one set of strips, and this is going to make two blocks. So I can go ahead and just set this aside. And you're going to continue doing this for the entire set of strips that you have. So my next one might be these two reds. I may grab a yellow, because that has a lot of contrast. And I like how that looks, because what we're going for is as much contrast as possible so that we can really see those hexagons. And then I will probably add maybe something with a lime green on it. So I will take this lighter color here with the two limey greens and that will make another strip set. And so you will continue doing that until you get enough sets for each of your block sets. So this is one and this makes two. Does anybody have any questions so far? So you'll take your entire jelly roll, all three of them, and you're gonna make enough sets for 49 hexagon blocks. Which means that I need 24 of these little bundles right here. So I'll take the next one and I'll do the same thing. I'll take these two teals and maybe I'll go with an orange. Because I like to use complementary colors. So this teal and this orange looks pretty good. I get good contrast there. And then I may add a limey green to that combination. or even actually maybe a gray. Let's add a little bit of a gray to that. And so now I have these three together. And I hold them out usually, and sometimes I take a picture, and if I don't see enough contrast between my strips, then I'll just put something else. And I'm not loving this gray there, so I may grab something else. Let me just grab this red right here. And I like how this looks a little bit better. So I'm probably going to do this group right here. And so you're just going to keep doing that to your entire jelly roll until you're happy with your color combinations. Okay? So give me a message and let me know if you're good with what I have explained so far. So you can drop it in the chat and say, yes, I am good. And I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes for you to start playing with your jelly roll. And while you're doing that, I'm going to finish sorting my roll and I'm going to start sewing my first strip set. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple more together. And I'm going to do a teal. Look at these three. I think I like those three together. Put these together. Making sure that I have um, sufficient uh, variety in my strip set. So for example, this one has these that are almost solid on the outside and the print on the inside. Uh, this particular strip set will have a large scale print on the outside and the smaller prints on the inside. And so just keep sorting your entire jelly roll until you get to the point where you are happy. And so if you are good, then we will continue with the process. Okay, so now that you've got a few stacks, 
I'm going to show you what to do next. And so in this quilt project, we're going to spend a little bit of time every Sunday working on a different step. So today is uh, your strip sets and getting them all sewn. And then I'm going to show you how to start cutting and prepping your blocks. So let's go ahead and get started. So let me show you. Um, I've got a couple of strips I've already started. And so in order to do my first strip set, what I'm going to do is I'm going to need a strip and a half of three colors. So for example, I have a red right here and a gray. So I need the same red and the same gray. And so I will get one whole strip and one half strip. So for strip set one, I'm simply going to cut one of those strips in half. And so I have a 21 inch piece and a 42 inch piece. And that is for color number one. Now I'm going to set this aside because I'm going to use that in a different strip set. Then for my next color, for color number two, I'm going to take the same thing and I'm going to leave one strip in its entirety and I'm going to take my next strip and I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to set this one aside because I'll use that in a different strip set. And so I have a strip and a half of gray, a strip and a half of red, and I'm going to do a strip and a half of this beautiful teal. And if this color doesn't make you smile, I don't know what does. Um, Kathleen has a question. It says, I have four rolls. How many will you need to make? Um, Kathleen, pull your favorite colors out of those rolls. I don't know what your roll looks like. If your roll has duplicates, then you can do what I'm doing. But if your roll does not have duplicates, then you're going to need one and a half strips for each strip set. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in a minute. So I'm going to set this one aside because that's going with another one of my strip sets. So now I have one and a half strips of the gray. I have one and a half strips of the teal. And I have one and a half strips of the red. And so that's what I need to make one strip set. And this is going to make a total of two blocks. And so let me show you what I mean by that. So the first thing that you want to do is check that your sewing machine has a very accurate quarter inch seam because that really matters in this project. And so then you're just going to take, use a short stitch length. I've got my machine set to 12 uh, stitches per inch. You can do 15. This is my new baby, Coco Chanel. Um, I love her. She's one of my new babies. And so she is who is putting together my project. I have marked right here along the edge my quarter inch seam and I have tested this seam to make sure that it's accurate. And so let me show you what I've got. And so I'm going to sew all the way down the length of this long strip set. Making sure that, that quarter inch is nice and accurate. Teasing those little pieces to make sure they stay aligned together. Hopefully the machine is not too loud. I tried to put it on the opposite side of my microphone. Okay, anytime that you're sewing an extra long strip set, you're going to sew one direction 
going down. And then you're going to add the next piece on this side, and you're going to sew down the opposite direction. And the reason you do that is to ensure that your strip sets don't bow. And so your strip sets can get really wobbly if you're not careful. So I'm going to take and I'm going to open this guy right here. And on this side, I just ended on this end, I'm going to stick my other piece. So I'm going to grab this beautiful teal that we have sitting here. Don't you guys just love this fabric? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take, it doesn't matter if your selvages are on there. It doesn't matter if it's super even on the end because we've got some wiggle room in this project. So then I'm going to take, and I'm going to line that up, right sides together, and I'm going to put an entire strip set that has three. And like I said, if you sew with your seams going in opposite directions, you're going to end up with a really straight strip set. So if you want to, go ahead and get in the chat and tell me where you're from. I am sewing in Georgetown, Kentucky tonight. My friend Lynn is on there. I saw her earlier, and she is from Lexington, Kentucky. I see several people. I see North Carolina. So Tina's on here from North Carolina. Welcome, Tina. All right, so we're getting to the end of this row. Whenever I'm making a quilt that requires strips, if I can sew a half a strip, I try to do that because your strip sets end up being more accurate. Okay. Look at here. Those stitches are perfect. This machine is 60 years old and those stitches are still sweet. If you can find a vintage lady like mine, she's a Singer 301. She's a first run. I picked her up on Facebook Marketplace for $100, including the cabinet. So if you can find a, a bargain, and you can tune her up yourself like I did mine, you're going to be happy with one of these vintage ladies. Let's see, who do we have here? So we have Angie from Fayetteville. We have Glenda from Tallahassee, Florida. Welcome, Glenda. Let's see who else is with us. We have Norma. Yes, the machine was a bargain. I was super excited when I saw her for 100 bucks. All right, so now that I've come to the end of the road, I'm going to use a heavy amount of either fabric sizing or starch on this strip set, and I'm going to set it aside. Hi, Brenda. Look at all these fun people that are with us. So you can either use faultless starch or you can use fabric sizing. Whatever works for you. If you have best press, that also works. But in this particular case, I'm going to be using quite a bit of um, starch or sizing, not to excess, but we're going to be sewing a lot of bias seams. And so one of the things that I uh, want is for my pieces not to stretch, and I want them to match. And then I have Gail. Hi, Gail. Gail's from Georgetown. She's a good friend of mine. Welcome. So now that I have strip set number one, and this is all of our work this week, so... When we get off of here, off live, I'm going to have a Zoom for those who want to ask more questions. So your job this week is to sew all of your pieces into strip sets. But behind me, I have a card table. And the reason I have this card table is because, you know, those cute little New Zealand mats that look like this that are small? 
You can buy a giant horse pad for $25 and you can make a gigantic pressing surface on a card table like I have behind me. And so in this case, I have one that's 30 by 30. And I love using it for pressing giant strip sets. So you're gonna take your strip set number one and you're gonna lay this on your surface. You can put a towel underneath it if you want, but you're gonna give it a generous spray and then you're gonna just let it sit. So I'm gonna give it a little spray. And then I'm just gonna let it sit out here and dry for a little bit while I sew my next strip set. So I'm just gonna give her a, a little break over here because then I'm gonna press her. Okay, so that is strip set one, which is the whole strip set. And then I'm gonna sew strip set two, which are my little halves, right? And I'm gonna sew them in the same order. I stitched the other one with my gray in the middle and my blue on one side and my red on the other. So I'm just gonna take my half pieces and I'm gonna stick them right through my machine. Notice when I sew, I always have a little piece of fabric underneath, and that's called a leader and ender. And uh, the reason I do that is because it saves thread, and it's a great way to uh, keep track of what's going on with your pieces sometimes. Sometimes I use my little leaders and enders, and I leave them there, and I label my pieces, especially if I have blocks that I need to keep track. So like this one, I know where I started, right? I started here. So I know that this one will now get sewn on the other side. And so that just helps me to keep track of where I'm supposed to be sewing. So I went down this way. Now I'm gonna come and I'm gonna sew the opposite direction. And that's just to make sure that I'm keeping track of which direction my seams are so that I have nice straight strip sets. Okay, and so I'm going to do the same thing and sew one more seam. And this quilt is actually super simple to put together. I'm going to show you all the pressing tricks to get your pieces to lay flat. You're not going to have to do any Y seams and people are going to think you spent hundreds of hours working on this project. My favorite quilts are the quilts that look complicated but are super easy to put together. I call them easy peasy lemon squeezy projects. And so those are my favorite. If you have suggestions for any projects that we should be doing live, let me know. Um, one of the projects that we're going to be doing later on is a jelly roll purse. So if you want to make a jelly roll purse, I'm going to be making that at the end of the month when I am finished with this quilt. I'm going to work on that. And then we're going to work on a Christmas tree skirt with jelly roll strips. So that's the end of the row for this guy. My friend over here to my right should be getting close to being dry because I've got my ceiling fan running. It does two things. It dries my quilt blocks and it keeps me from having hot flashes. And everybody knows what happens to us at a certain age. We need fans all the time. All right, friends. Voila. So here's my half strip. And it doesn't matter that it's not even. Um, what matters is that the colors are in the correct order. And if I touch this one, it's almost dry and ready to press. 
And so now I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to give her a little spray. So I'm just going to spray her from the front and I'm just going to leave her. Okay, so now I'm going to take my strips and I'm going to press them all in one direction and it doesn't matter which direction. So I see a couple of people are excited. Yes, Jelly Roll Purse is on my list because I'm going to be giving a couple of them away to family as Christmas gifts. Okay, so let me show you now. We are ready to press. Okay, anytime that you have a big strip set like I have right here, you're going to want to press from the back. And that sounds counterintuitive. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to push with my fingers and I'm going to kind of guide that. And when I mean press, I mean press. You're not um, scrubbing. So I'm taking my um, iron and I'm just laying it down. I'm not scrubbing back and forth. And so this is my nice quarter inch seam. I'm checking that really quick. So I always take my ruler and I check my seam allowances and it looks like that is a nice quarter inch there. And that looks like that's a scant quarter inch. So hopefully that should be fine. Um, but now I start pressing, right? So I got them started and I'm pushing my seams one direction. So these are all going either up or down. It doesn't really matter but you're gonna take and you're gonna press them. And so I'm gonna lay them down like this. I'm gonna tease them with my finger as I go. And I'm gonna take my fingernail like this and lay those down. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want those to lay flat in the direction that I want it to go. And when I press this strip set, I'm gonna press this way to keep it as straight as possible. I think pressing is almost an art in quilting and sometimes they don't spend enough time in quilt classes teaching you how to properly press your pieces. And so I just take my iron and I make sure that I don't have any tucks in here, right? And I'm making sure that all of my pieces are laying flat and I'm just kind of taking and, and rubbing it with my hand as I go because this is slightly damp. You don't want to stretch your pieces and so you're going to take and you're going to literally take your iron and you're going to lay those this way. Make sure that your seams go the way you want it to go. And keep moving your iron. Don't leave it there and burn your stuff because then you're going to cry. And then when you cry, your mascara runs. And when your mascara runs, it gets all over your face. And then when it gets all over your face, you got to wash your face. You've got to wash your face too many times and your skin's going to wrinkle and then it's going to be sad. So try not to do that. So I try to make sure that my seams are consistent. So for this project, you're gonna to wanna to use either just a slightly scant or a straight quarter inch seam. Um, if you have a quarter inch patchwork foot, that's the best. And so if you notice, that looks pretty straight. And so I'm just gonna keep uh, my strip set as straight as possible. And I'm going to pull it across here and I, I go from one direction all the way across and I just kind of check. This is still slightly damp, so I don't want to stretch it. That's the, the enemy of quilting is when you start stretching all of your blocks and distort them. And so as long as you're using a, the same seam allowance on your blocks, then you should be fine. And so for this, this is a little bit damp, so I'm just going to give it a second like this with the iron. And I'm going to make sure that that is straight, and then I'm going to come back this way. So pressing is an art all, uh, all in itself when you're quilting. And if you notice, I use a very lightweight iron. I don't have a great big heavy iron because I don't want it to distort my blocks. So this is like one of those $7.95 Walmart.com specials that never turns off and that's why I like it and it's super lightweight so it allows me to press my blocks without distorting them and so that's my favorite iron. I know a lot of those famous quilt ladies have those super expensive irons but uh, I like the free easy and cheap method and so 
If you're in the free, easy, and cheap club, you are in the right location. And so you're just going to take your entire block and you're going to press like this. And I just feel that seam to make sure that it goes the way it needs to. And then I feel that seam and I just keep pressing down. And if you notice, my strip set has stayed very square. And so I'm just going to carefully roll it like this. And I'm going to pull it, and I'm almost to the end of my strip set. And so just take your time. This is like a relaxing activity if you want to sew all your strip sets and then lay several of them out and then press them. That's up to you. Um, some people allow their strip sets to dry completely before pressing them. I like them to be uh, mostly dry, but not completely stiff like cardboard. Okay, so if you'll just go all the way down the strip set on one side, and then go all the way down the other side, keeping that iron flat, and just going straight down all the way to the end. And making that flat and straight. So then when I get to the end, I'm just going to let my iron sit for a second. And I'm going to check my strip set. And so my strip set has body, but it's not too stiff. It's not like cardboard. It still has a little bit of flex to it. So that's what you need. So you have strip set number one, which is an entire strip set. And then you're going to need your other strip set, which is little baby strip set number two. So I've got this little guy back here. He was drying on my card table. And so now I have strip set number two. And I'm going to do the same exact thing to this little guy. And I'm going to check to see which way my seams went. So they went from the blue to the red, all in one direction. So I'm going to do the same thing to this guy from the blue to the red. And it won't take me any time at all to get this guy ready for cutting. Does anybody have any questions so far? You guys are good with the instructions, right? You need one strip set and a half to make two blocks. This is going really fast. So how's everybody else doing? You guys okay with the instructions so far? I will continue. If you guys are ready, just let me know. All right. Strip set number two. Nice and flat, nice and straight. Look at those quarter inch seams. We're good, right? So I have one whole strip set and one half strip set. So this is what you should have. One that's at least 41 inches and one that's at least 21. If you have that, then you are ready for the next step. So you're gonna take your strip sets in step number two and you're gonna fold them in half. And you're just gonna kind of know where that halfway mark is because this is where we start cutting. We're gonna start cutting in the middle. So, I know some of you are in places where you cannot get a hold of a 60 degree ruler because the entire quilt is cut with a 60 degree ruler. So I'm gonna take a short uh, moment and I'm gonna show you what happens if you have three 21 inches strips. That's your half set, right? Like this, that's your half set. So you need one and a half and you still might be able to make it work. So. If you do not have a 60 degree ruler, and I'm just using the Creative Grids eight and a half inch ruler, I have a link in the description of the, of the video if you need that. I'm gonna show you how to measure and draw one on graph paper if you do not have that, okay? 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to draw one on graph paper. So I've got some graph paper in front of me. As you can tell, I've been playing with it already. And so for this particular project, you're going to be cutting or you're going to be measuring your strip sets to make sure that your strip sets measure about or at least six and a half. So this should be six and a half from top to bottom. And that is. So from the top of this strip set to the bottom of these little peaks that I have right here, I have six and a half inches, right? The template that I'm going to have you draw is going to be six and a half inches tall because that's how wide, that's how tall or wide this strip set needs to be. So if you will take a ruler, right, and you will measure six and a half inches from the center line of some graph paper. So you can just take a ruler. And this is for those of you that do not have a 60 degree ruler. And I'm gonna mark this at zero. And I'm gonna draw. So I have here a dot, right? And I'm gonna measure all the way down to six and a half and I'm gonna put another dot. And so that's how tall my 60 degree triangle needs to be. So now I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna measure across the base of that triangle to see how wide that needs to be. And this looks like it is right at seven and seven eighths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and measure Draw this line. Just like this. And I'm going to divide eight, right? It's seven and seven eighths. I'm going to put that four right in the middle, right, of my paper. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that four right there and I'm going to draw not quite out to the eight, right? Because four is my middle number and I'm gonna draw out here. To where the seven and a half mark is. And then I'm gonna draw this one to where the half inch mark is. And so what I'm doing is I'm splitting the difference. And so now I can just take my ruler and I can join both of those on either end, and I should have a template that I could use to cut my strip sets. So if you don't have a ruler, you're gonna draw a line that is six and a half inches tall from peak to base, right? You're gonna line up your four right here and you're gonna measure all the way like four and a half inches approximately, a little bit less. And then you're gonna stop here and then you're gonna measure the same way. And you're gonna leave a half inch and a half inch shy on either side. Does that make sense? If you uh, have trouble drawing this, I can scan this template. And if I lay this on top, mine fits right where it should. Because see this dashed line, that's where I'm cutting. So if you have trouble measuring your uh, template on graph paper, I can scan this on my computer and I can email it to you. So just let me know, drop me a question in the comments if you need a paper template and I can literally scan this and send it to you so you can print it out and use that to cut. Okay, so technology is our friend. Does anybody have any questions? Are there anybody out there that needs me to send them my drawn template for this project? If you do, I will be glad to scan this and send it to you after live is over, okay? So now we're gonna start cutting. So I'm gonna start with the shorty and you're gonna do this so all week long before next Sunday, you're gonna sew enough strip sets to get started. So maybe half of your strip sets. So you need a strip and a half and I'm gonna show you how to cut enough to make two blocks. So let's get rolling. So this is my half strip, right? 
So this is my guy that's 21 inches. I'm going to fold him in half. And I'm going to take and I'm going to put a little tiny mark right here. And then I'm going to take my ruler, my 60 degree ruler, right where I have that spot. And I'm going to lay my ruler right there. And if I have accurate seams, I can look down my ruler and I can see that this lands on two and one fourth. Because if I have two and a half and I take away a fourth, I should have two and one fourth and that lands right at two and one fourth. If I look down my ruler and I see four and a half, I know that this second one is accurate. And if I come all the way down and where my little peaks are is at six and a half, then I have done this correctly. And so now that I have checked very carefully where my stuff goes, now I'm ready to cut. Hi, Joy. Welcome back. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up from the right. And I'm going to cut up from the left. Oops, sliding. All right, sliding, sliding. So be careful, friends. So be careful that you're not sliding around. I slid just a little bit, so I'm going to come in and check. Let me give her a little snip. And she looks pretty good. I just didn't make it all the way through. So my pieces should look like this. And now... My strip set looks like this. So I have one piece on the left and one piece on the right. So the next piece that I'm going to cut is either this one or this one. It doesn't really matter. I can just slide that over, flip it. I'm going to lay my template right at that peak. I'm going to line it up and I'm going to check that these lines are at two and a fourth and four and a half. If those are at two and a fourth and four and a half, then I know that this is accurate. And I'm making sure that that line is along that seam. And if it is, then I can go ahead and take. And if I want to, I can slide it over just a smidge to make sure that it's even. I can flip this one around and double check my guide to make sure that it's accurate because there's nothing worse than having pieces that are not accurate. So I'm going to lay this towards me and line that up again on the four and a half and the two and one fourth and line it up across the bottom. And I'm going to scooch him over because I gave myself some trimming room. And I'm going to pull that off. And now that piece is exactly the way I want. So this guy looks good. So now I have two pieces. And they look opposite. And that's okay. Because these are going to end up on two different blocks. So block one is going to have the red on the outside. Block two is going to have the teal on the outside. So I'm going to keep cutting. And so I'm going to end up with uh, several blocks that are red on the bottom and teal on the bottom. And so I'm gonna cut these right here you save because we're gonna use these on the outsides of the quilt. So don't get rid of those, save those. Don't chop them up and try to use them for anything else, okay? So now we're gonna continue with this project. And so we're gonna take, and I'm gonna cut one more from this piece. And if you can flip it around to make your life easy, flip it this way, however it works for you. I kind of like to have them at a little bit of an angle so that I can see the edge on this side so that I can see my seam lines right here. So I'm lining this up with two and one fourth and four and a half. And that looks pretty good right there. And then I'm gonna cut away from me for safety's sake, right? And then I'm going to save these two guys right here. So these scraps will end up being the filler pieces on the outside of your quilt. So you save all of these pieces. Okay. So my little strip set will give me three. Right. That look like this. I have two that have a blue peak. 
and then one that has a red peak because this is where I chopped it from. And so if you have three pieces from your short strip set, you are ready for the next step. And so I'm just going to stack them all because I'm calling this A and B. And now I'm going to do my second strip set. So my second strip set is the same way. I'm going to start it in the middle. So I folded it in half. And it doesn't matter which way you go. Either one works fine. And I'm just going to mark it right there so that I have that peak. And I'm going to start cutting from the center. I'm going to cut from the center out. And again, lining that up at two and one fourth, at four and a half. And if this lines up, then it's correct. Looks like it does. So now I'm ready. There's my little lump for my next cut. And make sure that you're lining those up on those seams. Because the last thing that you want to do is get those wrong. And so I'm going to take this, set it over to the side, and I'm going to continue cutting until I get six pieces of each color. So I'm going to cut this one here. And I'm going to flip my ruler around the other way. Don't be dangerous like me. Wave your rotary cutter around while it's open. And just keep going. Down to the end. you should be able to get at least one more out of this strip set. Well, like I said, save these little guys because we're going to use them later. And so you can start separating them into group A and group B. So your group A will have the red on the inside. My group B will have the teal on the inside. And so now I have one, two, three, four. I need a total of six of this guy, and I have two of this guy. And now I have three. So I have three and three. I'm halfway there. Nope, no, I have four and three. I'm getting close. So I'm going to continue cutting. I need another red peaked one because I'm one short. So I'm just going to do the same thing with my strip set. I'm going to lay it away from me like this. I'm going to light it up so where it's facing me and I can see these lines. However it works for you, I know that sometimes cutting can be a pain. But for this particular quilt, if you take your time and line up these seams across here, then you're going to end up with a beautiful project. And thankfully, I have not injured myself yet on live TV because that would be tragic. Julie has a question. Why am I cutting from the middle? Um, I'm cutting from the middle because if you cut from the left to the right, your um, blocks can end up being skewed like this. And so if I cut from the middle and work towards the outside, then it, it increases the likelihood that I'm going to be able to keep my pieces nice and straight because even, even the best quilters can get a little bit of wobble on their strip sets. And so by pressing them the way that I did and by cutting from the middle to the outside, it ensures that you have nice straight lines to cut from. And that's why I do that. And it reduces the amount of waste. That I have so I don't have to go in here and, and do a bunch of um, trimming and so it, it makes sure that I'm getting the most out of each of these. So if you ever cut 
from a strip set, I like to cut from the middle to the outside. And that's just a trick I learned a long time ago. And it works great every time. And that's a great question, Julie. Does anybody else have any questions about what it is that I'm doing here? All right, we are getting close. So now, as you can see, I have a total of one, two, three, four, five. I just need one more of these. And I have one, two, three, four, five. So I just need one more with a red tip of A and one more with a blue tip of B. And that will be set one. And what I'm going to do once I get an entire hexi like this with six matching triangles, I'm going to use a little clip and I'm going to clip them together. And so this week, um, in your spare time, right, that's what you're going to work on. You're going to work on your strip sets and making sure that you have um, started piecing together and cutting out your triangles so that you are ready next Sunday for step number two. And so each Sunday, we work on a different step. And by the end of the month, you should have a beautiful hexagon jelly roll quilt ready to go to the long arm quilter, or if you can quilt it yourself, that's even better. And so this gives me um, the ends, and so I'm saving these. And I have six of one and six of another. And so this is everything that you need to do for week one. And so for week one, as you can see, when you put these together in groups of three, and we're going to be doing that next week because I'm going to show you how to uh, press these and how to get them ready. Each one of these groups of six will create this big, beautiful, delightful hexagon. So I'm going to show you how to pin, and I'm going to show you how to press. And next week when we sew this guy together, it's not going to have a hole there. But this is what my uh, giant hexagons are going to look like. Does anybody have any questions about what we went over tonight? So tonight is night one of the hexagon quilt. Like I said, you're going to need to sew your strips and cut them into groups of six of each type. And then when you're done... You're just going to take a little clip and you're going to clip these guys together. And you're going to need a total of 49 of these little groups of six. So you need 49. 49 full hexes or 98 half hexes. But I'm doing mine all the same. So I'm going to make 49 sets. And I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. If you have questions, questions I'm going to post a zoom is there going to be a hole in the middle after they're sewn no there is no hole in the middle once they're sewn that hole in the middle is my quarter inch seam once I sew those that hole goes away if you want to make this quilt larger than a twin because this is going to be a twin size um, then I will do the math and I will post that on um, my Facebook page I'll make a chart and I'll show you how many more hexes you need in order to turn this into um, a full slash queen or even a king. So I'm going to be working on mine. And if you want those dimensions, I will post them on the website this week. Okay. So, okay, friends, homework. So your strips, six in each stack, and you are ready for next Sunday. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Don't forget to post your questions if you have friends that want to join us. Like and subscribe this channel. We're going to be doing lots of fun things here in the fall, including jelly roll purses. So don't forget to do your homework. I will see you next Sunday at 7 p.m. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, friends. I will see you guys later. Have a great week. Enjoy the break tomorrow if you are off for Labor Day. Bye-bye, friends. I'll see you guys later.